Hey everybody, so who's teaching you this anyway? Well, I am. I'm teaching you this stuff. I'm trying to educate the people who want to learn how to do concrete on how to do it. And this is where you're going to learn. So I've got a private membership called the Concrete Underground. Inside there I have all my training videos. And this is something similar to what you're going to see in there if you want to learn how to do your own concrete floor. Now this is a garage floor. It's got a four foot frost wall around it because we live in Maine. A lot of people when they build new structures they'll put a frost wall in the ground. Those walls go, not only are they about a foot above the ground, they're four feet below the ground. That's how deep the frost gets here in Maine. So we put concrete down below the ground four feet so the frost doesn't play with the slab at all. And then we'll pour a concrete floor right inside it. So if you're thinking of doing this yourself, if this if you're thinking of a DIY concrete floor, do-it-yourself concrete floor, this is going to be something very similar of, as the way you'd attack it right here. Now what we're doing is we don't do the excavation, so the dirt work was done. You know, the people come in and they do the concrete foundation. Then the excavator shows up and he backs he backfills it with gravel, compacts it as he goes. And then when we show up, it looks like this. So we're subcontracted on this job to do the six mil poly, the wire mesh, and then pour and finish the concrete floor. Now this is this video is going to be about pouring the concrete, but you're getting to see a little bit of prep here in advance. So it's about six o'clock in the morning right now, six a.m. It's a it's an early spring day here in Maine. Still a little chilly out. But we get, we get here early, concrete's for 7 o'clock, so we'll get here at 6 o'clock, and we put up our garage form boards. So the two boards in front of the garage doors you see there, we just uh, shot a grade with our laser, and see the laser over there on the right. So we shoot at grades with our laser, we, we go four inches above the dirt grade, and we make these marks on the concrete. We call them top of slab. And then we'll just tap con, we'll, we'll drill into the concrete and then and we'll screw right through into the boards, through into the concrete to hold the boards on. And we'll do that with all the door openings. So those, those kinds of things I teach you and show you how to do all that in the concrete underground. So the next thing we do is we call the concrete company. You know, we'll, we'll figure the concrete. If this is, let's say it's 24 foot by 24 foot, so 576 square feet. My, the easy formula I have is uh, for dividing that by 80. And so three, 576. And I always use the outside dimensions, so I have a little bit of extra concrete. 576 divided by 80 equals 7.2 yards of concrete if it's exactly four inches thick. Now, what we find is nothing is ever exactly it's usually up and down a little bit you know if it's if it's up and down a half inch you know if it's four and a half inches to three and a half inches with an average of four inches that's that's usually considered pretty good up here in Maine for the excavators in our area um, but we usually always add extra so if I was if I got to 7.2 on, on an exact measurement like this I would just order eight yards of concrete and then I know I'm not going to run out because if I run out, I may not get any more. <laughs> it depends how busy the concrete company is. You can't just count on them sending you another truck if you run out. You may have to wait for one to come back. That could be two hours. So I'm, I'd rather waste a little bit of concrete than have to worry about running out and ordering more. So we'll call the concrete company. We'll give them the date we want to pour. We'll tell them what time. We always like to start early. So the day of the pour, the concrete truck shows up. We tell them to mix it up to about a six inch slump. We use a 3500 PSI floor mix. We have microfiber mesh in the concrete. Even if we have the wire mesh in here, we still use the microfiber mesh. I ask for a mid-range water reducer so I can pour about a six or a six and a half inch slump, which is about what you see us pouring right now. And then for us in Maine, because this garage may or may not be heated, we don't know that. I asked for a low air entrainment. So it has a little bit of air entrainment in the concrete. And that just helps with freeze and thaw. If, if water gets into the concrete in the wintertime and then it freezes, 
The little microscopic air bubbles inside the concrete help give the place for the water to expand when it freezes in the concrete and not pop the surface off and cause, you know, scaling and peeling and stuff like that. So we'll back the truck up. We'll have him mix up to the slump we want. In this one, we had to hook on a little chute to get it to that back wall. That's our little chute extension. You can buy those, you know, at, at places, uh, concrete supply stores, you know, like Deco Crete Supply or White Cap. If you really need one, if you pour like every day like we do, you're going to want to need one. But if you, this is just the only floor you're pouring right here, then you may be able to just, you know, if it's too far to that back wall, you think just to pull it, you may just wheelbarrow a little bit to the back and then pour the rest out of the chute like we're doing here. So what you can't see too good in the video is we have a blue line snapped on the inside of that concrete wall right at top of floor grade. And that's kind of what we're using as our as our grade to eyeball the concrete to as we're pouring out the concrete. So Darren and Luke have the two concrete come alongs in their hands. I'm holding the chute with the wire hook there pulling up the wire as we go. And as Darren and Luke are kinda kinda leveling out the concrete here with the come alongs, you know, they're using that blue chalk line to go by. Nothing really to go by in the middle. They're just eyeing it the best they can in the middle right now. What we'll do is we'll use the laser here in a minute. Once we get enough concrete poured out, we'll use a laser and set it what we call a wet pad in the middle to floor grade and use that to screed off from. But first of all, what we like to do is, you know, because we do this every day and we're really experienced, we like to pour out almost the whole garage floor. Just leave a little what we call a little hole in a corner. In case we're high, we can pull that high into the area that we don't have concrete in. But we like to get it almost all poured out before we start doing anything else. Sometimes, like right now, if one guy can break the concrete down, that's what Luke's doing right now. We call that breaking it down. Darren will go back, and he'll start magging the edges to the blue line. And that just gets us a little bit further along uh, when we get ready to screed. We'll use that, that smooth mag pad, what he's doing right now, to screed off from. So Luke's going to continue kind of leveling out the concrete. I'll hold the chute and run the concrete out of the chute and pull the wire at the same time. And we're going to continue pouring this out and Darren's going to mag the edges. So this is basically where you start. You get the concrete poured out, you get something to work with, and then, and then you start getting your grades established before you screed. Now you could, you could stop right here and get what we have poured out uh, screeded down and bull floated before you pour any more out if you wanted. If if you feel like you're new to this and you don't want to dump this whole thing out because you're not quite sure what you're doing yet, you're probably better off just pouring out a little bit at a time, like do it in thirds versus do 90% of it like we do. And then depending on how hot out it is, you know, on a cool day like this, you're going to have a little bit more working time with the concrete versus if it's 90 out and sunny. Then, then you're not going to have much work time. You're really going to have to hustle. You may want to ask, if, if it's really that hot out, you may want to ask for a chemical in the concrete that slows down the set time. It's a retardant, it's called, and it slows the set time down, gives you more working time with it. Uh, personally, we never have to use that. We're always fast enough to get the concrete down in plenty of time, no matter how hot it is out where we live here. So Luke does a pretty good job of breaking that concrete down and getting it close to grade. You know, he d he's got a good eye for the level of the concrete, how thick it needs to be. This this subgrade, the gravel grade, was graded pretty good. So trying to get everything at four inches thick is isn't as hard as you quite think it might be. If you've done it a little bit, then you start getting the hang of it. <laughs> Just gotta watch that wire. <laughs> Luke almost tripped on the wire. You can see how I'm not really slowing down waiting for Luke because I'm pouring, as I pour the concrete out and move the truck ahead, I'm getting it fairly close to grade anyway. I'm not like letting it build up too high or getting it too low. All Luke really needs to do is kind of just pull it back and forth a little bit to level it out. 
And that's something you don't want to do if you're pouring it right out of the chute. You just don't want to pour out a big, huge pile in one spot and then try to have to pull it around. You want to, you want to keep that chute moving, keep the flow of the concrete going slow and steady, and then, you know, let the guy that's raking the concrete out like Luke is not have to work too hard, but just, just steady enough so you get the concrete poured out in a timely manner. So this is what I mean by getting about 90% of it poured out and leaving that, we call that a hole, but just leaving that uh, empty space there at the end. In case we're high up, up in the first part, we can pull that high right into that spot where we don't have any concrete, then we won't have to shovel it outside. So as Darren continues to mag the edges around the outside perimeter, I'm going to take the laser now with the receiver on it and I'm gonna make a pad in the middle the same level as what Darren's magging the edges to. And then that's gonna give us something to go by in the middle. There's a lot of ways you can do this. This is just the way we like to do it. Um, so this is kind of like the way I teach it. It's, it's always nice to have a laser and make sure, what I like about having a laser is I know that our pads are perfect every single time. You know, perfect to within whatever the laser's tolerance is. And usually at, at this close a level, uh, distance, the tolerance on that la laser is really, really finicky. So you get a really nice uh, grade set versus if you're like two or 300 feet away from the laser. Now, if I remember right, this floor slopes a little bit from the back towards the front. So about two inches from the back to the front. So that means the back is higher than the front. So when the, when the cars drive in here and let's say they're wet or whatever and they're dripping on the concrete, the water's gonna have a tendency to run towards the doors and out the doors versus just puddle up under the cars. And this is how we do most of our garage floors like this. And it's not really any harder to, to put a slope in the garage like this as it is to pour it flat. You just need to set your grades that way. The concrete's not gonna run or sag or anything with only a two inch slope in a garage like this. It's basically the same feeling in the concrete as pouring it flat as it is with a slope. So Darren's got all the outside edges. You can see how nice and smooth those are to go by now. Uh, Luke and I are just finishing up the front, getting our grades established in the front. We like to set the forms, the, the door forms, right, the floor grade so we can use them to eye the concrete off from we can use them to screed off from and it also makes it easier to finish the concrete off from later on when you're power trialing and this is what i mean by striking our pad so we got our screed you could use a nice straight two by four here if you're only doing this once and luke is now using the pad i set with a laser as a guide to go by while darren's using the outside pads that he magged and we screed that area nice and flat and smooth right there. It actually has a little bit of a slope to it from the back to the front, but as you can see what I mean by flat. So now we can use that screed, that area that's nice and smoothed off by the screed to go by to get the rest of the concrete screeded or rotted or whatever you want to call it. We call it screeding. As Darren and Luke are working together with the screed, you know, I'm there with a the come along, just raking the concrete. I'm pulling it back a little bit if they're high. I'll push it up a little bit if they're low. And you probably won't be able to kick screed like we are, but you could, you could stand there and pull the screed, you know, two, three, four times, and then stop, set back, pull it two, three, four times, stop, set back, and basically get the same result. We are just not quite as fast as what we're doing it takes a little bit of practice to be able to kick your feet and screed at the same time and the reason we do it as you can see we're pretty fast at it and the reason we're kicking our feet like that is we're just as we pull a boot out we're kicking concrete back into where we just pulled our boot out to replace that concrete and that way there won't be a little hole there or a divot as we screed over it now, if they get them guys feel like they're low, they'll stop for a second and they'll wait for me to push some up. And then they'll get going again. And they'll just keep screeding as long as I'm raking the concrete to the right level. They'll keep screeding until they run out of pad to screed off from. 
you can see it doesn't really take that long to screed half of a garage floor like that. Literally just a couple minutes when you know what you're doing, when you when you know how to attack it, and when you know what to go by. Now that what we're doing here is we're gonna we're gonna just check that form, make sure that form board doesn't have a dip or a hump in it by running that screed right across the front of that garage door because worst thing in the world is to have your garage built with a garage door on it and have a big hump in the middle of it or a big dip in the middle of it. You want it nice and flat across the bottom of that garage door so the rubber on the bottom of the door seats well to the concrete. You can see how we're, when we rod the concrete like that, the very edge of the screed is leaving like a little bit of line in, in the concrete to make sure, and we call that scoring. So if he's leaving that line, then he knows he's scored on the pad. I'm talking about Darren and me, really. And you should have a nice, even line along the whole area of the part you've screeded. And that means that that part of the floor is now screeded off correctly. If you don't see that line, then you're either too high or if you see a really, really deep line, like more than an eighth of an inch, then you've probably dug into the concrete a little too much and you need to stop, set back, fill that in and go back over it again. Yeah, so there's like basically three quarters of the garage floor uh, poured out and screeded. So that's most of the work done right there, really. And you can see that wasn't really too bad. Now I'm going to go grab the bull float. The next step is to get the what you've screeded, bull floated, get it smooth, and then that's going to prepare you for the finishing process. So I've got all the finishing videos inside the Concrete Underground to teach you how to, you know, either finish something like this by hand or finish it with a power trowel, get it nice and smooth, get your saw cuts in it for your control joints. I teach you all that stuff. So I'm running a bull float over it. That bull float is four feet wide. It's got the rounded edges on it. I like the ones with the rounded edges. They tend to leave a little bit less of a line on each end when you're pushing it and pulling it back. And then you can see I'm just going nice and slow. I'm tipping the edge up a little bit in the direction I'm, I'm going, either if I'm pulling it back or if I'm pushing it forward. The edge of it wants to be tipped up just a little bit so it doesn't dig in. And that bull float is basically consolidating the aggregate at the surface. It's pushing down the rocks a little bit, which at the same time brings up a little bit of cream and a little bit of paste, and it smooths the concrete out really nice, gives you a really nice surface to finish. Now with a slump like this, basically a six inch slump, when you bull float, you basically just need to push it down and pull it back once. Sometimes you'll have to go over the same area twice, but usually never more than twice. And it's nice and smooth. Darren and Luca just finishing up the screeding. They're just putting a little bit of extra concrete in. You can see how that turned out pretty good. We didn't really have to shovel any out. You're not going to have a big, ugly pile of concrete on the outside of your garage floor because you dump too much concrete in there. You know, don't let the concrete truck driver hurry you. Sometimes them guys tend to be in a hurry if, if they seem like you don't know what you're doing. They just want to dump the concrete out and get out of there. That's not really how it works. You bought the concrete. You get a certain amount of time to get it dumped out. And, you know, you don't want to make a mess doing it. You can see I'm just going down and back. Now I'll, I'll do this half of the garage. If I had more handles, I could go all the way across. But I'll just do this half from this side, then I'll go over on the other side, do that other half. Makes it nice when you can reach the bull float, reach it and bull float it from all from the outside. <laughs> then you can really screed everything before you bull float. Sometimes you gotta stop from screeding because you can't reach it from the outside and you gotta bull float from inside the floor. And that happens to us all the time on a lot of pours. But usually on these smaller garages like this, we can get it all from the outside. Now what they're going to do is they're going to go back and just double check this garage door and make sure that looks good. Run the screed over it. Yep, everything's nice and flat. They're happy with it. Now they're just going to leave it and wait for me to bull float it. So I'm walking around just getting all the edges. Darren's going to end up, you know, magging the form boards here in front. But 
as you continue to watch me bow float here, this is basically the one of the easier types of floors you're going to do if you're looking to do a concrete floor by yourself. Now, this could be a little bit smaller for your first one, for sure. Um, but this is this. You're going to attack it the same way. You're going to, you're going to, you know, the concrete. You're going to get the concrete truck backed up. You're going to pour out what you feel comfortable with pouring out, and then you're going to get your grades set on the outside, get your grades set on the inside, and then screed it off and bowl float it the same way. So uh, if you're looking to DIY a concrete floor and you're not really sure the steps to do it, these are the steps right here. They're, they're pretty basic. They're pretty simple. At least uh, us, they are because, you know, we do it every day. But if you watch this one and you watch some of my other videos, you'll see we do the same process every time. And then inside my training, you know, I go into either further details and further steps as the things to look out for. And then you have access to me in there. If you have a question, we can email back and forth. We can talk in the forums. Occasionally, I even give my cell phone number out. We can talk over the phone if you're really confused over something you're doing or if you really need some extra help. But if you're going to DIY concrete, you know, I don't know who else is teaching you this stuff. Nobody that I know of is teaching it. There's all kinds of other concrete guys on YouTube, but no one, no one's really teaching it the way I am. And I teach all kinds of other things about concrete too. You know, how to stamp concrete, obviously how to finish concrete, do a broom finish on patios and pool decks and stuff like that. Uh, how to repair concrete. How to do epoxy coatings there's all kinds of things that i like to teach people and if you need a mentor if you need some help if you need some one-on-one -on -one training you know just reach out to me send me an email uh, you can look me up on instagram everything about concrete uh, you can find my facebook page i got all kinds of stuff on there or you, you look at my TikTok. And just reach out to me, you know, direct message me. If you need some help with something, we'll figure out a way that we can help you. But just finish this off and let me know down in the comments if you like these type of videos. So what happens next is after we get it bow floated, we, we wash up all the tools, make sure everything's clean. We get the truck loaded back up. And then we'll just leave one guy here to power trial. So he's going to sit around for a little bit on a day like today. You might sit around for an hour. He probably probably about 20 or 30 minutes before he starts tapering the garage doors down a little bit But probably an hour to two hours before he starts power trialing and that's just the basic process when you pour and finish concrete floors Oh, yeah, that was pretty easy 24 24 eight yards of concrete four inches thick got fiber mesh in it 3500 psi And that's about as easy as it gets for us right there. Just blow it right in get it screeded bow floated now We'll just leave one guy here to power trial You know, we'd probably be done by noon one o'clock 7 30 in the morning right now So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one